Hi, welcome back to our podcast, Relationship Alchemy. I'm Jordan Bessonnier. I'm Olivier Bessonnier. And today we have a guest on our show, and we're going to be talking about a super, super juicy topic, as always. How do female cycles affect intimate relationship dynamics? And today, to go into more detail, we have the beautiful Miss Kayla with us. Um, Yeah, I just want to give some background information real quick on Kayla. Um, We actually, I actually had the pleasure of joining one of her women's circles, and it was while I was pregnant, and it was a huge transformative experience and i'm just so juiced to have you on our podcast today Mm -hmm. i'm so honored thanks so much for asking me to be here yeah Mm -hmm. so we're friends we know each other uh pretty well and um as we speak you have uh your uh, workshop i mean the new version (laughs) of uh, of you (laughs) therefore of your workshop uh going on and um and yeah, if you, if you can talk about for a minute about um, what this workshop is about and where does it come from for you? How is it meaningful for you? And then we're going to transition it into the relationship dynamics since we're relationship alchemy, we're here for relationships. <laughs> but you, what's your approach? Hmm. Yeah, so I'm currently offering a workshop on reclaiming the cyclical wisdom of our body, as well as cultivating relationships with the natural living world. So with the elements, with plants, with our own um, unique ancestry. And um, yeah, I feel like the better part of the last eight years for me has been a really deep dive into exploring both somatic and spiritual traditions and really like through that exploration something that I didn't know that was missing for me like through all the you know yoga vedanta meditation like tantra organic farming circle work like something that has become really alive for me in the last 2 years has been um understanding my own body and mm. how that impacts every other aspect of my life and mm. so um yeah my cap really got blown off um for that reclamation. Uh, Last year, I took a three-month course with uh, Laura from Threaded Red. She's an amazing facilitator, and she really gave me the crash course of, like, uh, female health and um, also the mysteries around menstruation and how ancient civilizations everywhere really worshipped and revered and honored not only menstruation but the womb and the blood and the connection that the womb has with the natural cycles. So yeah, I'm really Mm -hmm. excited to dive in with y'all. And um, yeah, also this reclamation for me has impacted my intimate relationships. So it'll be fun to dive more into that later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're kind of a mirror for us as you're also very close to your partner, you also, like we we do business together, we live together, we, we don't have like separate jobs that we go to, you know, a nine to five job and then coming back together. We're very um, enmeshed with each other, with everything, our souls and everything that we do. And so as a mirror, I'm also curious on how uh, you manage your relationship with Zach um, through the lens of what you know, which is exactly what you just explained, so if you want uh, first to talk about um, what's the, the, the wisdom from your workshop and what, you know, what are the, the main, like the, the nutshell or the, the things to remember, you know, and then mm-hmm. how does, and then we'll, we'll tie into how that it, uh, impact or affect uh, your intimate relationship. And I'm curious on how that can re- mirror yeah. with us. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So I feel like a big core belief that the workshop is unpacking is that for women and womb bearing folks that health does not mean that you need to look and feel the same way every single day. Mm. And so how do we one first understand that and know that there's nothing wrong with us when we go through these very distinct 
cycles of like growing and kind of decomposing or like uplifting and kind of, you know, the lower, more shadowy aspects. And how do we, you know, from a practical standpoint, how do we care for ourselves through food, through nourishment, um, through exercise and, um, yeah, also like what are the superpowers of each part of our cycle and what are the maybe potential things that we need to be careful of, especially if we have mm -hmm. hormone imbalance, you know, how can we work with hormone imbalance? So, yeah, this is a lot of what we're unpacking um, in the Remember program that I offer. Um, and for me, in relating with Zach, this has been... I don't know, like such a treasure because I think there, you know, especially for like uh, male female relationships, there can be a kind of comparison that happens, especially mm -hmm. from female bodied folks, where it's like, mm -hmm. why does my male partner always look and feel the same way? Like, why mm -hmm. are they so like persistent and consistent? Mm -hmm. And like, is there something wrong with me? Like, because I don't want to do the same things every single day. Like, I don't want to work out the same way every day. I don't want to eat the same way every day. And so for me, it's been this process of like, I know myself and I trust myself and I don't need to compare myself to my partner because he's a healthy, vital, beautiful man, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. my version of being a healthy, vital, beautiful woman or womb bear is doesn't look the same as you know somebody who has a penis and who's in the testosterone mm -hmm. hormone cycle so mm -hmm. yeah wow i definitely relate to that so much with olivier like yeah sometimes i feel like oh my gosh like it's it's admirable just the different cycle that he's in of like you know, I, I like to think of it as like very linear energy of just like that straight and steady, like I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And like, I'm like, yeah, I can keep up. I can keep up. Oh, no, I can't. No, I can't. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. The world is burning. <laughs> so I am so excited to like hear more about these, you know, go in depth about the cycles and hopefully we can get some tidbits out of this yeah. that will help our, you know, intimacy flourish more. And yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah. Just to give it a small practical example, it's going to be a little bit intimate, but uh, we had a, um, so we, <clears throat> we have an amazing uh, flow and we, we just have uh, some rough bumps around money and how to manage it and how to, like the drive to to make it mm -hmm. and we had we had a um, a coaching session with um a man who is um a good uh, a business coach mm -hmm. and um and she was saying well right now I'm, I'm i'm getting into my period which means you know for me ideally what did you say ideally you know i would oh ideally i wouldn't be working right now yeah and um for the next five, you know for the next days. five to seven days like taking it super easy and his <laughs> response was like this is completely unrealistic yeah right and so coming from uh the male perspective as well and like you said you know well you know i'm on this rail because i'm i'm building something and i'm making things happen it's like for me it's like taking seven days off is like what in this uh, modern Western society? But at the same time, you know, I love her and I want, I want to respect her natural cycle and not force her into something that's not natural, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I think it would be, um, I, I hate this. You know, I hate how Western society is so masculine oriented and it's, it's this mold, either you go with it or you're, you know, judged. Mm -hmm. So how do we do it, Kayla? Do Please do help. <laughs> <laughs> help us understand. Yeah. I mean, even as you're saying that, I feel like this like comes back to a culture problem also. Mm -hmm. Maybe not a problem, but a cultural uh, priority preference that we have right now where we are in the shackles almost of capitalism. And mm -hmm. so we need to be productive all the time. We need to be linear. We need to like not take rest. Like, you know, we wear like I'm busy as a badge of honor when like, 
you know, ancient peoples and peoples who are living in cycles with the moon, with the sun, they knew that periods of rest and follow were just as necessary as those periods of blooming. And so, yeah, I feel like um, as a listener, like as a male bodied listener, like learning, you know, we can just start diving right into like, how can you support your partner with the menstrual phase, which is the first phase of a new cycle. So there's four phases for a cycle um, for female physiology. And the first one is the menstrual phase, which archetypically is the inner winter. Mm. And it's also the dark moon. And so Um, traditionally in ancient cultures, this time of the dark moon would be this time where all the women and womb bearers would retreat into a menstrual hut and they would take this time of rest and the Mm -hmm. entire village, not just womb bearers, but men also would take rest from hunting. Like there was no moon in the sky to hunt with. So they Mm -hmm. would have more periods of rest as well. Um, And so in our modern day culture, how can we, you know, begin to reclaim this cyclical wisdom? Um, So for the menstrual cycle, it's good to know that the female is at her lowest uh, hormonally. All the hormones are at their absolute lowest that they'll be at any point in the cycle. Estrogen, progesterone, um, and all the other small key players are at their lowest. And it's actually this low amount of hormones that prompts um, mm. that prompts the menstru- menstruation to occur. And so mm. emotionally, it can be a really sensitive time. And so as a partner, there's a lot of, you know, ways that we can approach menstruation to support our partner. Um, I mean, one, just acknowledging like, dude, this is an intense freaking physical process. Like your partner is literally shedding the uterine lining inside of her body. It's like she's literally Mm -hmm. part of her is dying. Like what? Like Mm -hmm. if if you cut your thumb open and you were bleeding for, you know, four to five days, you know, you would go to the hospital. Like you would feel really frightened. Like, oh, I'm bleeding so much. And like there's so many people who are bleeding right now and just expected to go about their normal everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And so as a partner, um, some things that have felt really supportive for me, um, you know, giving your partner space to rest and doing that by one, helping her with her food during this time in the menstrual phase. It's, you know, we need really easy to digest food. So soups, broths, teas consider making a big batch of like some hearty, like a beef stew or a miso Mm. soup, um, some herbal tea that can help relieve some of her cramping, bringing her warm water, um, offering, asking like, does she need space or would she like to, you know, have some kind of like physical touch, massage? Um, Yeah, like really learning to also honor the bleed with your partner. Like when your partner is... Mm. Can you also take a sacred pause in your life? Can you also make space for rest and feel like my partner is not the only one going through this period of rest, but I'm going to consciously step into this kind of underworld of menstruation with her and allow myself to really just rest and do nothing and feel how necessary and important that is for both of us. I love that advice. (laughs) We will definitely uh, be integrating some of that. I love that. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's felt really supportive to have Zach be connected with my cycle. And, you know, like when my bleed comes, he's like, oh, your moon is here. And he like makes me a pot of ginger tea. And it's like, Mm. There's this reverence in our household. And I think, you know, as a partner who's trying to support an intimate bleeding partner, like, can you invoke this reverence that like, wow, like the power of my partner, like she is literally bleeding right now and going through such a process and also invoking this like, yeah, respect for that. And yeah, it can be a really powerful time for both, both people. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's so beautiful yeah i love I the, so touched the ceremonial or mm-hmm. connection um mystical connection that uh you bring um into a uh, day-to-day life mm-hmm. very inspiring mm-hmm. yeah do you guys want me to keep grooving on some yes, yes. 
Cool. So from the inner winter, from menstruation, um, once the bleeding ends, so no more spotting, um, that first day without any spotting begins the follicular phase, which mm -hmm. is the inner spring. Um, and it's called the follicular phase because at this time, a new egg um, is growing inside a follicle in the uh, ovary. And so during this phase, estrogen is steadily rising. So there's starting to be this uplifting kind of like you're coming out of this like winter cocoon of energy of menstruation. And as the follicular begins, it's like this renewal, this upliftment. And so um, it can feel like such a breath of fresh air from the last half of the last cycle, like the luteal phase into the bleed. And now we're here at the spring again. Um, during this time, um, female physiology allows for neural connections to be formed most easily. So mm. the brain is so active. Um, this is a really good time to try something new in partnership, like invite your partner to, you know, maybe a new communication game mm -hmm. <laughs> with Gordon and Olivier. Go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, or try an authentic relating game or, you know, mm -hmm taking a dance class or an art class or something that's new and like, you know, menstruation can be a really intense experience for some bleeding people. And so a way to kind of like celebrate this inner spring with your partner could be, you know, to dive into something new, encourage your partner to kind of shake off that winter energy and like, you know, remember that they're alive and remember mm -hmm. that there's a chance to feel that new rising of life again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely relate so heavy to that inner spring. And like, I noticed with my own, you know, following my own um, creative patterns, which are, you know, tied directly to your life force. Um, I always get such good ideas in mm -hmm. my in my follicular phase. I'm like, oh, maybe we should do this next. Or like, maybe we should do this. And then this is when I start to notice like, after the death of winter so to say like the drive for life comes back and I'm like mm -hmm. okay I'm okay mm -hmm. that was just my period like life is good you know just like like you said shaking off that that winter feeling mm. yeah. yeah it's very interesting for me because uh, my creative flow is a little different in the terms of um, I have maybe like an, um, this phase for me would would be more uh, activation or like uh, um, implementation phase mm -hmm. and during this the winter it would be more okay uh, listening to audiobooks or taking a course or like okay I'm not active so what now I'm a sponge so during the winter I would be more sponge and during the spring I would be more creating myself so at, outwards but when, when I'm hearing and and therefore it's it's easier for me to judge her Mm -hmm. during her winter like at least you could you know read a couple of books or learn something new right but what i'm <laughs> what i'm hearing is that it's true that if i was depleted in terms of you know all my hormones like i would not even want to open a book mm -hmm. or learn anything new right mm -hmm. yeah so that th thank you for that you know distinction yeah yeah something that's coming up too is um also like a neurochemistry thing that's really cool is actually during menstruation, um, the, the left and the right hemisphere of the brain are in the most communication that they'll be of any part of the cycle. And so it's not really a time of forming new neural connections, but really a time of reflection and, mm -hmm. you know, feeling like, how do I actually feel about something and really taking note of our lives instead of taking in new things. It's such a like, digestion phase of like this is how my last cycle was like what are the things that I'm celebrating what are the things that like I want to call in for my next cycle this is like a really ripe time to kind of be in that just like reflective quiet introverted state which like we definitely yeah. don't value as a society mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah okay yeah makes sense okay oh my god <laughs> I'm just sitting here like uh-huh uh-huh. Tell me more. <laughs> Tell us more. Tell us more. <laughs> yeah, so we went into the the inner spring a bit. Um, you know, you guys are Is that is that what you you would call the evolution phase? No. Okay. We're, we're 
Go ahead. The you said, you go. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we just were in the follicular phase. So the first phase of the cycle is the menstrual phase, which lasts anywhere from three to five. Some bleed a bit longer, maybe three to seven days. Um, and now we're in the follicular phase, which usually lasts around seven to 10 days. Um, and that's the inner spring. Um, because you guys are relationship alchemy, it feels fun to say that this follicular uh, phase after menstruation for the cervical fluid is usually a dry phase. It's mm. a, usually a naturally more dry part of the cycle. And so that's completely normal. And so as far as like intimate connection during this part of the cycle, um, giving more space and time to really like you know, get the other juices flowing because there's not really this natural supply during the follicular phase. That makes a lot of sense, like reflecting back because I always thought like, oh, I'm heading into ovulation. I should be like, mm. you know, there's it. Uh, now it makes sense, but it always felt like there is a lag, you know, like, like when's ovulation coming? <laughs> like anytime, like, come on. <laughs> But now I know it was I was just in my follicular phase. So mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, the follicular phase is really like this building energy, just like just like springtime is, you know, like we start to get those warmer days and then like bam, we're in the peak of summer, which is a short flash in the female hormone cycle. It's uh, usually only around, it's usually, it's actually one single moment ovulation, but people consider it usually three days or so. Um, and so from our follicular, now estrogen um, is at its peak in the ovulatory phase. Um, you get a slight spike of testosterone um, and all your other hormones have this little spike which releases the egg um, from your ovary. And, you know, this peak of energy, you know, is really this like, for some can be this really juicy, magnetic, like beautiful mm -hmm. feeling, creative time. It's really like this inner summer of like feeling our own radiance, feeling like who we are. Um, and, you know, for others who have hormone imbalance, ovulation can be painful. Um, there can be anxiety around this time. So it's definitely not a like one size fits all with the hormone cycle. That's like a whole other podcast on hormone imbalance. Yeah. But, you know, from the archetypal standard, um, ovulation is this, um, it's basically the peak of it. You know, you're at your highest high at this point. Um, your immune system is at your strongest. Your brain is really strong. Um and so for a partner to, you know, support, like, what are some activities and things that, you know, would be nourishing for somebody who's ovulating? Sex. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> All the sex and be careful. Um, I would say, but wait. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, for those who want to like transition from hormonal both birth control, for instance, and use a natural method, which is a total possible, you know, 99.6% effective way of birth control is the fertility awareness method. And, you know, it's a really simple, accessible method, so much cheaper than birth control, which involves taking your temperature each day and being connected with your cervical fluid. Um, you'll actually be able to know the exact day that you ovulate. And, you know, one of the rules around FAM is like either being extra, extra careful, like condom and pull out method careful with sex around ovulation or completely abstaining to make the, the method of, of, you know, a good form of birth control, which is, you know, kind of like the universe's... <laughs> I don't know, some sick joke where yeah. we're the most primed for sex and, you know, for a biological purpose to recreate a baby, obviously. Um, That's rough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the time that you like wanted the most is the, 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 the time to be the most careful. <laughs> most careful which we definitely were. <laughs> and that's how Cedar got here. <laughs> Actually, I think my egg released a little bit early. Um, and I, I think my sperms didn't die that fast. Yeah, because <laughs> we, had, we had that conversation of like, okay, you know, it's been yeah. like seven days. Like we should, you know, cool it off with <laughs> more pulling out and uh, 
it was too late. Yeah, Cedar that's... saw his chance and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, cervical fluid is like so beautiful. Like mm-hmm. the right kind of cervical fluid can keep sperm alive for five days inside. The <laughs> that, now we have this scientific explanation. Yeah. <laughs> My cervix said hello. Yeah. I'm here at the party. <laughs> Yeah, so other than lovemaking during ovulation, um, you know, this is a time to kind of support your partner and them being, like, really seen and celebrated. Like, go out dancing. Go to the social event. Consider going on, like, a double or a triple date. It's, like, not really this time. You know, it could be this time for really, like, one-on-one connection, but it actually may feel more supportive to kind of get your partner out of their shell and, like, they're feeling bubbly and social and you may even feel more attracted to them watching them just radiate in a group of people Mm. and be, you know, there was some experiment of um, kind of side by side photos of the same people. And it was like 90% of people, it was like a photo when they were in their luteal phase and a photo when Mm. they were ovulating. And it was like 90% of people thought that the people that were ovulating looked more beautiful in that photo. Mm. So it's like this natural juice and beauty that's mm-hmm. coming out. Um, mm-hmm. Also, like if you're a workout kind of person, you like to sweat, you like to, you know, for me, Zach is like very physically active. He's um, a long distance runner. He likes to move weight around and like really loves to be in his body during this part of the cycle as a partner to encourage your partner to work out with you. This can be a really Mm -hmm. fun way to connect. Like she's in her most vital physical strength. It's like invite her to the gym, connect over sweating, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. estrogen is at its peak here as well. And so a lot of estrogen dominance runs rampant Mm -hmm. in our culture, which is a, Mm -hmm. a key player in so many of the hormonal symptoms that unfortunately so many of us know of and a good way to, flush that excess estrogen is through sweat and you know opening up the skin and so Mm -hmm. why not you know help your partner's hormone balance by inviting them to the gym or Mm -hmm. getting sweaty in the sheets whatever (laughs) (laughs) it's like i would prefer our bedroom (laughs) (laughs) to each their own (laughs) beautiful yeah i love it I, I love that as you go through the cycles, you know, the, the name relationship alchemy comes into really substance because relationship alchemy, alchemizing, mm-hmm. like the female cycle is such a, a drive for that. Mm-hmm. It's the magma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the fire, the magma can, that can really like melt and recreate. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, it definitely takes a willingness from both people to like, one, like as a woman or a womb bearer, like taking the responsibility that you want to be an active participant in your hormone cycle and you want to know your body, you want to reclaim that for yourself. Like this is, it takes, you know, a willingness to do that. And there's so many resources out there to begin that journey. And then also to like learn that and then invite your partner in to be like, you know, I want you to know where I'm at in my cycle so that like, Mm -hmm. we have more understanding. There's this deeper level of intimacy that's like, very primal almost and like animalistic Mm -hmm. and you know kind of like obvious also that we've just lost touch with and so yeah it feels really beautiful to be talking about it and feel how like like why why do like more of us like not already know about this you know yeah totally I mean we were just listening to um was it police secure that was talking about no that was, it was sex at dawn oh yeah they were saying well the only um ape or, or mammal that does not have or th- there are only like us and the bonobos bonobos <clears throat> yeah that um don't display the female does not display when she's ovulating um, in season yeah when she's ovulating or, yeah. yeah and so <laughs> right because I- every other mammals like it's they're, obvious. <laughs> they're, yeah, their genitals swell, you know, some even um, change color. And mm. they also, it's really, inter- <laughs> side note, but it's really interesting because humans and bonobos are the only um, 
primates that have sex during their whole cycle right. versus other animals and primates that are when they're ovulating that's the only time that they'll have sex so, so how come we don't know well it's not obvious so we have to learn about it, it, it i mean i don't know I, I, i'm just you know um saying as it's coming through um you know um but it it's such a social skill actually uh to to cultivate mm -hmm. And mm. to integrate. That's why we need you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A really good place to start is, you know, charting your basic fertility signs. You know, for any womb bear listening who's like, how do I even get started connecting with my cycle? Um, you know, knowing that the very first day of your cycle is the first day that you bleed. And then beginning to take your temperature upon rising, you'll need a basal body thermometer. And then also just getting connected with your cervical fluid. And the cervical fluid goes through a very distinct pattern throughout your cycle. So does your temperature. And these two biomarkers are enough for us to know when we've ovulated. They'll be able to help detect hormone imbalance. Um, you'll be able to like feel connected like, oh, estrogen's rising. Like I see that directly in my cervical fluid. Like I'm having more cervical fluid. And so, yeah, taking charge of your fertility is a really good book recommendation that I'll offer um, just for anyone listening. Like, wow, I really want to know more about my cycle. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really good place to start. Sweet. I'll we'll have to add that to the show notes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. what's what's next? after? So we, before we go to the next, what I've noticed in terms of communication, couple mm -hmm. communication, um, is that if, if I've if I have things that trigger me and I have issues that I want to bring up, if I bring them up during um, the, the bleeding phase, usually she's not receptive. She's like, don't bother me with that. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to respond to that. And now I understand that since um, her hormones are all depleted, um, I understand more why she's, she's more in the... Okay, I'm gonna say it—a grouchy space, phase, <laughs> or a mindset, or I mean, she's she's already like she looks uncomfortable with herself, and so if I bring things that are challenging, usually it's um, she's like I don't want to address that, mm -hmm. but if I bring things up during her ovulation phase, usually she's very open, and mm -hmm. we don't get into conflict. <laughs> And she doesn't take it personally. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's way more flexible for finding win-win uh, solutions or thinking outside of the box or being open to, okay, I, I want to learn that too. And I want to figure out as well. And um, so I, I've noticed that <laughs> I don't get the same resistance. <laughs> Yeah, you know, one of my teachers says that estrogen is a social lubricant. You know, so during Beautiful. ovulation, <laughs> during ovulation, we kind of have these like rose colored glasses on, which is like, is nice. It's like a natural high. It's kind of like, you know, buzzy and social. Um, but then as we're moving into our next phase, the luteal phase, you know, those rose colored, colored glasses kind of start to come off. And that doesn't necessarily need to be a bad thing, I think. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think we have a lot of negative connotation, you know, even like using this word grouchy to describe, mm -hmm. you know, the bleeding phase instead of just like, you know, my partner is experiencing a low or um, mm -hmm. like I feel like we just have this connotation, like I said in the beginning, that health means that we look and feel the same way every day. And um, well, I'm sorry. Her, she's more grouchy in our communication, but now that I understand more yeah. what's behind it mm -hmm. and where it comes from, um, I don't need to give it a negative connotation. Mm -hmm, totally. Okay, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, so I think communication during the ovulation, like if you're like wanting to have a really big conversation, it's like, okay, my partner's ovulating. Like this could be a really supportive time. And moving into the luteal phase, as there's this rise in progesterone, so estrogen dips right after ovulation. You get a really um, 
big spike downward. And your other neurochemical, progesterone, which is like our relaxing, grounding, it like promotes good sleep and good feelings, it starts to build for the first week of the luteal phase, which mm -hmm. is the longest phase of the menstrual cycle and um, of the menstrual ovulatory cycle. And I would argue the most misunderstood and the most like kind of um, desecrated and one that like is the biggest reclamation, I think, for both, you know, womb bears and for partners who are trying to support their female partners. Um, so, yeah, as progesterone begins to rise up during this phase, this can actually be a really good time to have really big, you know, communication things because all that social lubricant of estrogen has begun to drop and your partner is going to be a lot more grounded. She's going to be in mm. her body. She's going to be like, you know, thinking a bit more critically as well. So it may not just be this like full fuck yes, but mm -hmm. she may actually have, you know, more insight during this phase. And um, yeah, so the first week of uh, the luteal the luteal phase, um, progesterone goes up. And this is in case you got pregnant during ovulation. Mm -hmm. So progesterone yep. is keeping mm -hmm. your uterine lining intact um, in mm -hmm. case you got pregnant. And so the first half of the luteal phase, you're still feeling okay. You may feel this afterglow of ovulation. And then once your body determines like, okay, you're not pregnant, then all the hormones begin their slow descents down until they get to their lowest point, which would cue menstruation again, cue the whole mm -hmm. cycle over. Mm -hmm. And so this, this second half of the luteal phase, it's typically two weeks long, usually like the first week right after ovulation. And then the second week, which is like leading up to your bleed, which we've, you know, determined as PMS, um, mm -hmm. time, the premenstrual, so many things are going on during this time. Um, and I think this part of the cycle needs, you know, you know, I would say before menstruation, this part of the cycle needs the most care from mm -hmm. partners and also self care as a womb bearer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, during this phase, uh, women and womb bears are burning on average 100 to 300 more calories a day, just naturally, mm -hmm. like from a metabolic level, we're like, mm -hmm. we're hungry, we're hungry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. this combination of the metabolic rate being up, as well as um, the hormones starting to drop and get to their lowest, this creates this like food craving you know, like so many disempowered choices happen during this time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat the whole box of donuts. I'm going to mm -hmm. eat the nachos or like whatever mm -hmm. your gravy, you know, I need dopamine food is. Mm -hmm. So as a partner, some food recommendations during this time is to feed your partner deeply satiating foods, make her a pot of bone broth, make, you know, get some, you know, grass raised grass finished beef and make burgers mm -hmm. for her and mm -hmm. eat her food that is nutrient dense and that will take the edge off and leave her feeling really satisfied um for a lot of womb bears this time of the this part of the cycle we can be expressing a lot of hormonal imbalance depending on where we're at mm -hmm. our experience of pms and so this may be a time as a partner to, um, you know, one of my teachers says she's reclaimed PMS to please make space. So, mm. please oh, make I love space. that. You know? <laughs> and for me, I've, I've reclaimed this as prioritizing myself, prioritizing my sustenance and mm. prioritizing my space. So mm -hmm. I want to be fed. I want to prioritize myself. And as a partner, this is like a time to be like, not taking shit personally like your partner mm -hmm. is like becoming very raw emotionally mm -hmm. it's the inner autumn like things are falling away things are not as sparkly as they once were and mm -hmm. it can mm -hmm. be really intense the inner critic comes out she starts to judge mm -hmm. herself all her insecurities are coming to the surface mm -hmm. like how can you be a supportive friend when she's in the middle of the storm that can be you know that deep luteal right before the bleed so i have a question with that Mm -hmm. Because I, I totally understand um, the inner uh, turbulences, but what, how, 
the problem, like you said, is when we make choices out of that. So as, as a mirror, you know, in, in, in my communication classes, I say, you might have judgments. You might have things that um, value differences. And if you acknowledge those differences, you don't need necessarily to act on firing your partner, you know? but mm -hmm. you know, acknowledging there are differences, acknowledging your judgments and speaking for your judgment instead of from your judgments, for example, I have a judgment that, you know, and not necessarily acting on it. So mm -hmm. how do you, how do you say for yourself? And can you give me a tip? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how can I say, you know, like I, I hear everything that you're, um, questioning, but can we not act on it because of this phase? And, and you know, because of the um, negative connotation, you know, if somebody says, oh, you're just PMSing, that's going to be like <laughs> the thing not to say. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, it's, oh, then you're crazy. And if, uh, everything you say, anything you say doesn't, it has no value. So how do you communicate that? And first, how do you hold it for yourself? And how can you partner communicate that to you so that you receive the message um, positively? Mm, really sweet question. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, as a womb bearer, I think the first, you know, we have to make this personal before we can relate over it. Yeah. And so, you know, as a woman, as someone with a womb, if, you know, you're feeling, you know, as you begin to learn your cycle and you observe in the luteal phase that you're really angry or insecure or, you know, you're having all these really intense, overwhelming expressions um, that are connected with your hormone system, this can be a really big indicator of hormone imbalance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, until we get our hormones back into a state of balance, this may not be the best time to try to be relating really intimately with another person. You know, instead of like, you know, it's kind of asking the question, like, am I in a place where I can communicate lovingly? And, you know, maybe I have some really intense things going on, but I can still communicate with integrity and love. Like, this can be a really powerful time to have those dialogues and conversations, like when there's this like really, you know, beautiful, critical voice. And if there's a lot of hormone imbalance, it can be, you know, this thing of personal responsibility of like, hey, like, I'm feeling really uncomfortable right now and I don't think I'm in the right space to talk about this with you and, mm -hmm. you know, taking space. And at this point, I really am an advocate for radical self-care during this time. If you can, you know, ask your partner, like, I don't think I can talk about this with you right now. Like, would you be open to like, you know, watching the watching our child for an hour so that I can take a luxurious bath? Or would you be open to connecting in a nonverbal way? Like, would you be open to exchanging some massage or grounding each other's nervous systems? And, you know, if you notice there's a lot of this intensity in the luteal phase, creating space for that mutual grounding and coming back. Um, and then maybe from there, there's space for talking, but it's like obviously going to be circumstantial depending on the moment um but i think making space for mutual care together would be a really good way if there's a lot of intensity um and as a partner advocating for that and being like you know what i think we need to like stop fighting right now how we're doing and like maybe at that point you just need some space if things get really hot and heavy it's like mm -hmm. i know for me like asking for space and not feeling bad about that with my partner, like with Zach, like mm -hmm. I feel really angry and uncomfortable today. And I really, you know, I'm, I just need some space and I'm, I notice that I'm taking things out on you. I notice that I want to take things out on you. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, asking for space and feeling like, Oh, I can, I can hold myself too sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> definitely uh relate heavy to that and like you know i mean hormonal ba imbalances are i'm like really diving into that for myself um you know after having a child and then um also stopping breastfeeding you go through another 
hormonal change as your body stops making milk. Um, so yeah, I'm really navigating that myself. And I just love like PMS is, is turned into this like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, it has a really negative connotation. Like, oh, you're just PMSing. You're just being bitchy because you're in, like about to have your period. Um, and I like learned about that through like the way my parents modeled their relationship. Yeah. Actually, I feel really emotional about it. Mm. But yeah, my dad would just say like, oh, you know, not only to my mom, but eventually to my sisters, to my sister and me and like, like, oh, you're just PMSing. And it became this like, negative shameful thing like oh the way you're acting is because of your period and like you know mm -hmm. just this really negative yeah I hear you so much it's almost like a curse that gets passed on us like yeah PMS it's like <laughs> yeah yeah I hear you yeah I, 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 I for me it's like so hard and heavy when somebody is criticized for something they can't change you know like you're bad because you're a woman or a man or um something like it's it's the one thing i can't change mm -hmm. right and so that's that's hard that 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 is yeah i hate it yeah and also too just like learning like okay this part of my cycle is supposed to be like this, mm -hmm. these super intense emotions. And yes, it can be like that. But upon further exploration of hormonal imbalances, you know, learning this other, this, this other way it can be. And so mm -hmm. I've been like, you know, slowly making the steps towards this, like, this cycle that doesn't take me out all the time where I'm able to still, you know, manage the, our businesses and take care of our son and, you know, remain a loving partner for mm -hmm. my partner. And it's been, yeah, it's been a really fun journey of like, yeah, journeying with my cycle, I guess, of like, like, uh, yeah, switching, I guess, from like a maiden to a mom where there's like more responsibility you know, you can't just, okay, I'm bleeding, peace. I mean, you can. And also, you know, like considering our child and like figuring out all these things. And it, I like, I guess I relate it to like a game. Like, okay, like the game changed and now I have to like have this interchange and like, let's figure out the steps and like figure out the puzzle. And yeah, that's just my personal experience with hormonal imbalances, but, and PMSing. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't experienced anything negative, um, like the way you and therefore we navigate mm -hmm. that phase mm -hmm. um, has been so far. Like I've, I haven't felt that period, that yeah. period of time from you, mm -hmm. you know, um, more, more the other one uh, when you start bleeding, yeah. that, that one I feel yeah. uh, clearly. But the PMS phase, I don't. Because I've been working on my hormones. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. Uh, yeah. But I do have experiences uh, uh, with previous partners, especially uh, that woman who also was a tantra teacher. And the way she reclaimed it was like, well, this is my PMS phase, which is my phase to... Um, reconsider everything see what's working for me what's not mm. working for me mm -hmm. i like that approach but then she was unfiltered in the way our relationship was not working mm. right <laughs> and so that's therefore my question earlier you know it's like um i get the questioning and i'm totally cool with the questioning when it, but when the questioning comes into making decisions and into action right now based on that this is where it was too much for me mm. you know and i was like you know you you can definitely um reconsider everything including our relationship um but if that means like 
do your process, but don't bring me into it or don't ask me to make commitment and decisions based on that. Make sense? Yeah, for sure. I have this like rule where I just call it, I bleed on it. <laughs> like if I, have a big <laughs> if I have a big decision or I have this like, you know, some kind of thing with my relationships or like a project I want to birth. And I notice that I'm in this really critical stage of my luteal phase. I'm like, this is not the time for me to make a big decision. And I really feel that way. It's like, I'm going to bleed on this. And, you know, when I start coming out of menstruation, like that inner spring again, that renewal, it's like the mind is clear to make yeah. decisions. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I definitely prescribe the bleed on it method <laughs> i love it i love it i love it i will remember that definitely i mean yeah. it's it's not so much i mean i i don't feel a problem in our relationship mm -hmm. with that but uh i wish i had it 10 years ago i feel like we should change <laughs> the name of this episode to just bleed on it because <laughs> <laughs> i love it yeah. hmm. so that's all of the Cycle, okay. the phases yeah yeah we went through the four phases um mm -hmm. yeah some other just kind of general recommendations there is fertility awareness method um courses that are actually designed for partners as well mm -hmm. so you can you know they kind of talk to this also like to both partners um mm -hmm. so that can be a really beautiful way to learn about fertility, like learn the ins and outs, you know, we kind of just touched the surface of the hormone cycle here and like mm -hmm. more practical ways to like apply that. But I think learning really the ins and outs of the hormones and being able to objectify them with your partner can be yeah. really, really powerful. And so yeah, yeah the fertility awareness method, um, Alyssa Viti's research and work has been really insightful for me and Zach um, in our relationship and our process. She has a book called In the Flow and also mm -hmm. Woman Code that are both like, yeah, like what, like what was, what would an embodied lifestyle look like if it was guided from the wisdom of a cyclical body? And yeah, she really is a pioneer of research in that way. And so, yeah, just continuing to be curious and not think there's something wrong with our partner. Yeah. They look different. Mm -hmm each and every day, like mm -hmm. acknowledging their beauty in all their seasons and all their phases and starting to see like, okay, what are, what are their superpowers during this part of their cycle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can I appreciate this other flavor and texture? And, you know, there's this like meme that goes around, like, if you don't love me at my luteal, you don't deserve me at my ovulatory. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. feel that so much. I'm like, if you're not attracted to your partner when they're in yeah. their deep depths and their shadow and their insecurity, yeah. I think there could be like some underlying things that's like your partner is a full spectrum human being yeah. and mm -hmm. having a cyclical body just like exemplifies that even more. And so mm -hmm. it's a really beautiful way to like look at our own judgments and preferences and mm -hmm. learn how to love even more fully even more unconditionally and mm. yeah yeah mm. I personally love my luteal phase um it's actually the time I prefer to have sex the most mm. um because yeah you get that nice progesterone like I'm chilling which actually is throughout pregnancy um mm -hmm. your progesterone is like <laughs> crazy off the charts so i definitely enjoy that that phase of my cycle a lot and uh yeah i i really admire all the work that you're doing kayla um it's really beautiful the way that you're facilitating women into you know examining these these narratives and these stories that we've been told that may not necessarily be true mm -hmm. and yeah and it makes my job easier as a birth worker when women come in, you know, with this understanding of their body and themselves. And then that's when I can go, okay, you think you know it? Have the baby. And then we'll go back to that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you guys are interested, um, 
in working with Kayla, checking out any of her courses, any of her retreats. She does have her website, daughterofwater.com. We'll uh, link it in our show notes as well. And you could find her her information there. You can check out her gorgeous, gorgeous webpage. Um, yeah, and you're pretty active on Instagram as well. So to follow you, I suppose that's mostly the place. Yeah, it's the same, same handle, daughter of water underscore. Yeah, I'm pretty active. And I announce all my offerings there as well. Um, but yeah, I should have another cohort of my current program called Remember coming up in the fall. And I'm hope- also hoping to have a more intensive five day retreat somewhere on the West Coast um, in the late summer. So um other than that yeah i also have a cookbook coming out if you want to know how to cook and nourish and feed your um female partners it's called i am nourished it has phases it has uh recipes that are specific for each phase breakfast lunch dinner snacks and just some of my favorite recipes so really excited to share that too oh i'm so excited to buy that we had a sample we had a sample someone made us a sample who's in your course and oh my god it was I mean, so good almost all our friends are in your course yeah so. yeah <laughs> thanks for having me you guys it's been a real treat yeah. to yeah dive in and i really appreciate what you guys do in our community and mm-hmm. yeah it's so important to learn how to relate and be more human and more loving and deepen our intimacy with our friends and our relationships and yeah i feel like you know half of our population goes through this really Mm -hmm. really interesting beautiful dynamic process and so like learning to dive into that and be curious is yeah really sweet to know that folks are ready for that one of my keywords is integration how do we integrate all the parts of our lives Mm -hmm. and what i love is that um, you're helping us or teaching us how to integrate ancient wisdom in our modernist society that we have to integrate <laughs> because we're we live in it. But how do we reclaim and integrate mm-hmm. more of ourselves through those ancient wisdoms? Um, because this is where we come from. Like only um, agriculture is like ten thousand years old compared to the two million years old of Homo sapiens. Uh, so um yeah so only uh like how do we integrate who we are with this new environment and how do we integrate um communication and having a baby and the the transformation the season of the li- of our lives mm. uh, together so you gave just you gave us a big big piece today i love it yeah mm-hmm. thank you so much and <laughs> Yeah, and we're going to wrap it up here. And uh, just a reminder, if you love our podcast, please, please, please share it with anyone that you think could benefit. Um, Give us a five-star rating if you think we deserve it, which we do. And And, (laughs) And leave us a review. It'll be so helpful for helping us with the algorithm. So thank you, guys. Be kind and be well, and we'll see you next time. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs>